I'm going to work out some of the selected problems on this homework sheet that reviews factoring. So the first thing I'm going to do is just look at number one because this is a special pattern. It's called the difference of two squares. The difference of two squares is always going to factor into the product of two conjugates where one is a sum and one is a difference of the same two terms. So you can just break that up by taking the square root of each of these. So the square root of x squared is x and x and the square root of 9, not looking at the minus, just 9 is 3 and 3. And so this will give you the factorization for the difference of two squares. Now if you look at number 2, it is not the difference of two squares. It is the sum of two squares. So with real numbers, we cannot factor that. And so that's going to be prime. Now if you were thinking that it could factor into x plus 3 quantity squared, that is square double square, which would give you a trinomial. And since number 2 is a binomial, that would not work. So the first thing you really want to ask yourself any time you factor at all, is there a GCF? So if you look at number 3, there is a GCF. A greatest common factor of x can be taken out of both those terms. So x squared divided by x is x, minus 9x divided by x is minus 9. When I go back and distribute, I should get what I started with. Neither of these can be further factored, and so that would be my answer for number 3. Now I'm going to skip to some of the ones um, that are trinomials that do not have a GCF, because I'm going to show you a trick. And I think I'm going to just cover some of these up to save me some room here. So to show my work, I want to show you how to do number 8. So for number 8, there's no GCF because 31 is not divisible by 3 like 3 and 36. So the fact that I know there's no GCF, I'm going to start off with two sets of parentheses. So I'm going to look at the first term. Since 3x squared, it can only be 3x and x. I'm going to use that one first. Now for 36, there's a lot of factors. There's 1 in 36, there's 2 in 18, there's 3 in 12, there's 4 in 9, there's 6 in 6. Well, let me show you the trick with trial and error. Immediately I know it cannot be 6 and 6 because C6 would have a GCF with the 3. And so I can't put anything that would have a GCF in either one of these factors because in the original there was no GCF. Now if I choose 4 and 9, all right, let's say I want to choose 4 and 9. Well, I can't put the 9 with the 3. I'd have to put the 9 here, and then I'd have to put 4 here. So what you have to do in your head, well, but both the signs are plus. So you know it's going to have to be plus plus. But really you're dealing with the inners, 4x, and the outers, which is 27x. And guess what? That does give me, when they're both positive, a 31x. And so this is completely factored. So again, that's how I do this without multiplying the 3 times the 36. It's just the GCF trick. If there's no GCF in the original, then there's not going to be a GCF in either of these factors. So that's how that one's done. Now, let's see if I can uncover this and look at some of the other ones. Okay, so let's look at number 9 and do it in the same fashion. So I'm going to temporarily cover these up and get some work done for number 9. So for number 9, no GCF. So again, I know that this is going to break down into the product of two binomials. Well, 2x squared can only be 2x and x. For 24, I'm going to write down the factors. 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. Well, automatically I cannot pick 4 and 6 because 4 and 6 would both contain a GCF. They're both divisible by 2. And since there is no GCF here, I know that neither one of these can have a GCF. So let's start with 3 and 8. Well, I can't put the 8 with the 2 because they both... Um, 2 goes into both of those, so they would have a GCF. So I have to put 8 here and 3 here. Well, again, let's look at, I don't put signs in when I do the factoring. I just look at my inners and my outers. And I say, well, can I combine these in any way to get a negative 19? Well, yes, if they're both negative. But you have to check the last times the last to make sure you get that last term. And that would give me a positive 24. So it does work out, and that is the answer for number 9. All right, let's skip down to, um, let's do number 19. So I'm, gonna, I'm just skipping around and doing a few from each section. So for 19, again, there's no GCF. Now, this one's harder because there's many choices that I have for both the first and the last term. 
So I'm going to start with 28. Now, it's either 1 and 28, 2 and 14, or 4 and 7. Usually I try to go with the numbers that are closer together, so 4 and 7. So now for 6, it's 1 and 6 or 2 and 3. Well, let's just try 2 and 3. If I try 2 and 3, I cannot put the 2 with the 4, so I have to put 3 here and 2 here. Now let's just see if I could get a 13. So that is 21, and this is 8. Well, guess what? If I want positive 13, uh, 21 minus 8 is positive 13. So that means the 8 would have to be negative and the 21 positive. Now check the last term times the last term and make sure you get a negative 6, and you do. So it works. So I just happened to get lucky by the numbers that I picked. Um, all right, let's look at the next section. All right, now this is cubes. A lot of kids forgot how to factor cubes. First of all, what makes a cube when you raise an expression to the third power? So I'm going to give you the pattern that you're going to use for factoring the sum or the difference of cubes. So what it is, is it's a binomial. And I'm just going to write the word binomial up top here times a trinomial. So to get the binomial, you're going to cube root these terms. So the cube root of a cubed x cubed is basically just a times x. And then the cube root of positive b cubed is positive b. So you're just cube rooting. Now the same thing holds true for the minus. If I take the cube root of each of these, I get ax. And the cube root of negative b cubed is negative b. Now for the trinomial. So this is the part where I like to use this little um, acronym. It's called SOS. And what it means, it means square opposite square. And what you're really doing is you're looking at this binomial. You're squaring the first term. So each of those gets squared, a squared, and then x squared. Now if a was a number, you would just square it. Um, and then opposite means you multiply these together and put the opposite sign in front. So minus AXB, and then that last term in this binomial here, you're going to square that last term. And then that cannot be factored any further. That's it. That is not square double square. It is square opposite square. So the same thing with the second expression. I would square that first term. Do the opposite of the product, so plus AXB, and then square the last term. So you can see they're very similar. They just differ in sign. So let's see if we can do number 20. So first you have to recognize that both of these are perfect cubes. Well, what cubed will give me 8? Well, that's going to be 2 to the third. And what cubed will give me 27? Well, that's going to be 3 to the third. So you see how I kind of have this written in this form, and it's really relates to the expressions that I gave you here. So what we're going to do for number 20 is we're going to write this, and again, you're probably going to have to write small because it does take a little bit of room here, um, as a binomial times a trinomial. So to get the binomial, what cube will give me 8x cubed? Well, that's 2x. And then what cube will give me 27? Well, that would be 3. Now, for the trinomial, I'm going to do that SOS pattern, square opposite square, and I look at the binomial that I just wrote down. So if I square 2x, I get a 4x squared. The product with the opposite sign would be minus 6x, and then I square that last term. So this is the answer for 20, and you cannot further factor this trinomial. Now, if you look at 21, be careful. 4 is not a cube, and 32 is not a cube, but you have to take out the GCF first. So just keep in mind, always take out a GCF first if there is one. All right, now I'm going to skip to cortex. Cortex would be a degree 4. And again, if you look at number 25, always look for a GCF. That one has a GCF of x squared. So when I take that out, I'm just kind of like undistributing. So what times x squared is x to the fourth? That's x squared. This would be plus 10x, and this would be plus 21. Now, you're not finished. You have to constantly ask yourself, can any of these factors be further factored? Well, that's a trinomial, and it looks like I can factor that. For 21, I'm going to use 3 and 7. Now, if you combine 3 and 7, you get 10. And so that's my final answer for 25. Now, I'm going to skip to 27.
So let's look at this one. This is a quartic, but it's in the quadratic form. Now, what does quadratic form mean? Well, typically quadratic form would be like this x squared plus 10x plus 21. But if you look, the degree of that middle term 1 is exactly half of your starting degree. So if you look here, that degree 2 is half of this, or you can think of 4 is double. So anytime you see that the middle term is half the degree of that first term and it's a trinomial, we're going to factor it like a quadratic trinomial. But the only difference is instead of using x and x, we're going to use x squared and x squared. And then for 12, I have to think about it's either 1 and 12, 2 and 6, or 3 and 4. Well, I think 2 and 6 would give me a positive 4 if the 6 was positive and the 2 is negative. So again, if you look at your inners and outers, they're going to add up to this middle term, and then your last terms will multiply to be negative 12. So this is the answer for 27. So you should be able to do the rest of those in that section. For grouping, this one's kind of interesting because when you factor by grouping, you have to take out a GCF out of the first two and then a GCF out of the second two. So I'm going to show you an example that's not on the sheet. So it's going to look like this. Suppose I have um, x times a cloud minus 5 times a cloud. And I say to you, okay, what's the GCF? Well, the GCF is the cloud because that cloud is in both of these expressions, both, of the, both sides of the minus. So I'm going to factor out the cloud. And when I do that, I'm going to get well, what times the cloud will give me this x and what times the cloud will give me minus 5 times the cloud and it's minus 5. So this is kind of like factoring by grouping, except the cloud is actually going to be replaced with a binomial. So let's look at 29. So group the first two, take out the GCF, which is x squared. You get x plus 3. Now I want that binomial to reappear. So when I group the second two, I'm going to take out the GCF, which is 4, and you see how I'm going to be left with x plus 3. Well, now this x plus 3 is kind of like the cloud I factored out in that example. So now the x plus 3 is the GCF, and I'm going to be left with the x squared plus 4. Now don't be fooled by looking at the x squared plus 4. That is not the difference of two squares and cannot be further factored. Now, if you try number 30, this was a weird situation because when you factor out the GCF x squared, you get 3x minus 4. The GCF here, well, there really isn't one. So you could try taking out a minus 1, but that would give you 5x minus 2. These expressions are not the same, so guess what? You really can't do anything with number 30. And I think on the answer sheet, I just wrote prime because it really cannot be factored. Um, let's look at 32. So if I take out the x squared, which is my GCF of the first two, I get x plus 1. If I take out the negative 9, remember I want to get that x plus 1 again, so I want to take out a negative, which makes both of these positive. Now the x plus 1 becomes my GCF, and I'm left with x squared minus 9. Now this is the difference of two squares. So I bring down the x plus 1, and then I simply further factor my binomial that's the difference of two squares. Okay, now the last one I would like to go over the miscellaneous. These are also in quadratic form, like the ones I showed you with x to the fourth, except if you look, we have x to the eighth. But you see how that degree is half of this, and it's a trinomial? So we're going to factor it like it was a quadratic. But instead of using x and x, we're going to do x to the fourth and x to the fourth. And by the way, these should always match the little triangle of x to the fourth. And that's how you know it's in quadratic form. So I'm going to use 2 and 1, because that's all I could use for what times what is 2. And if I want a positive 1, I know that the 2 is going to be positive and the 1 is going to be negative. Now, you're not finished. This is the difference of two squares. So keep factoring until you're completely factored out. And um, again, look at your factors and ask yourself, can I further factor? If you can, then you've got to bring all your terms down and factor what you can. So hopefully this helped you doing the homework for tonight.